Right. How y'all doing? <laughs> Got your your microphones on? Maybe I so, wave your hand so I can see y'all. All right. All right. We're hanging out, having a good good old WordPress time. Uh, if you can, please mute your mic if you got some background noise, just because it's uh, a little distracting. But but yeah, other than that, I want to talk about teaching WordPress and teaching online, doing kind of some entrepreneurial things. Um, this is a little different than maybe our normal WordPress presentation, but then again, this is a different forum than our normal WordPress presentation. So uh, I'm really glad you could join us for this. Obviously, the world has sort of changed a lot, you know, since last couple you know last couple months and and actually doing online training i think is a whole brand new opportunity that that people are kind of now like doing you know and, and are more receptive to i think it's absolutely fantastic that a lot of my clients are much more um familiar now with like platforms like zoom uh because they're more conducive to doing online training which i think is great and they're having fun with the uh, zoom backgrounds and and using Facebook Messenger and all kinds of cool stuff. So I thought, you know, if we're gonna if we're gonna do a topic, we're gonna talk about WordPress, and I thought this might be a good topic to just go ahead and do. And this is actually one that I submitted to Word uh, WordCamp. So so yeah, I'm happy to do it here. And if you guys have questions, um, uh, we got Becky and China and Rich who are co hosts, so they will uh, stop me uh, if I if you guys have questions. This is free flowing, and this is kind of like a a culmination of years of doing this. I've been teaching WordPress sort of like with a, I used to do a, a WordCamp or WordPress jumpstart. I mean, I still do it. I just haven't scheduled one, especially since we're, we haven't been able to do in-person events in a while, but I've been doing a, a WordPress, uh, what I call the jumpstart, which is kind of like how to set up WordPress. What's a domain name? What's a URL? What's this? What's that? And I've done several forays into online training, mostly giving away my online training because I'm still working on building a, a tight funnel for that. But, I want to give you guys some sort of insights into what I've been doing well and what I've been kind of like trying to figure out. And that's the culmination of this presentation. Uh, and either way, this is like at least 10 years I've been doing this now. So I've definitely got some good reasons of why you want to teach, you know, whether it's WordPress or a faction of WordPress, like WooCommerce or something like that. There's lots of great opportunities to sort of share your expertise and share your wealth with the community. Um, obviously, WordPress is not something that, like, at least hasn't been traditionally something that people like went to school for, right? It's kind of something that we all learned on our own in a lot of ways, and and I think that's a a good re a good reason. Um, it sort of takes a sort of a, um, I need to turn. Let's see if I can do this in full screen mode. Can you still, China? Can you still see my screen? Yeah. Okay. Thanks. So, you know, obviously one of the main reasons why I like to teach along with freelancing and helping people with the WordPress sites, just like y'all, is it really kind of puts me in a creative growth mindset. Um, you know, I, we, we always, we have to constantly be learning new things with WordPress, right? Obviously the WordPress today with Gutenberg and everything else, not to bring up a, a sore subject, but with everything that's going on in the WordPress community, things have changed and, and we all have to be on the front line of this stuff. And I actually think that, that I've had clients tell me, I'm sure you guys feel the same way. Like one of the reasons why they like to keep me around is obviously for my good looks. No, I'm kidding. They like to keep me around because I keep my, I keep up with what's going on. Like I know what's the cool this and what's the cool that and what plugins are going to do this and, and what, um, what user experience might be better or what, what's going on in the WordPress community. And I know like, okay, don't update WordPress right now because it might not work yet just yet. So uh, you definitely, this stuff keeps you on the front line. I know you all can share that sort of experience with me, but that's, but that's a good thing, not just for WordPress, but as a human in general, it keeps us always wanting more, always willing to learn, always kind of like living a, what I consider really what WordPress has done for me is lived. I feel like I live a more fulfilling life because I've built a blog and I do a lot of creative things that I wouldn't normally have done if I didn't go out there and just do it. And WordPress is definitely something that I attribute that to. And I think that you will probably all at some level share that same experience with me. Uh, another reason why I like to teach is it provides tighter connections with, with uh, higher value clients or more value, provides more value to clients. Uh, just creating them a website is great, but when they're able, to, when they actually sort of see the, see the light and realize what they can do with their website, how to maximize it to its fullest potential, they really realize that this is a powerful tool, a powerful thing to know. And they really uh, respect me for that and value that. So definitely something to consider 
um, why you should maybe teach when you, whenever, when you build a website, maybe you should also teach, give them, teach them a little bit. It's better to teach a man to fish than it is to just give them a fish. Right. Um, another reason is it's an excellent source of referrals. Obviously when you help someone beyond just building them a website, they're going to be more tight. They're going to have a tighter connection to you and they're going to be more willing to refer someone to you if you're able to help them at a higher level versus just doing uh, this or just doing a little gig or something like that. So it's a definite, it's a, a great way to sort of build your um, portfolio of things that you do for people, because if you're able to provide more high value stuff, then the the ideal, the likelihood of them referring someone to you is much, much, much higher. And then finally, probably the most important thing, which I think we all need to think about at different levels. Um, we've actually had some similar presentations to this in the past. Uh, I'm trying to think of, um, uh, Robert, Robert, my guy, Robert, Robert had a really great presentation to our group regarding uh, productizing and, and thinking of WordPress more as a solution versus a, um, I see him smiling. So I hear, I think he's, I think he knows, but yeah, but at the end of the day, uh, teaching and creating courses and building sort of educational products is a great way to productize your business in ways. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. Obviously a lot of us are freelancers. We trade our time for money, but having a course or having a, a class or doing something like this is a great way to build a product that maybe you can build once and not have to keep doing it over and over again, which is the Holy grail, right? Uh, right now. We'll talk a little bit more about that, but oop, I lost my, um, I see a chat. Oh, yep. There you go. Thank you're welcome. So, uh, what to teach. Hey, look, you know, obviously what to teach WordPress is, you know, you could sit down and start teaching WordPress, but I'll be honest with you, I've done that for many years. And honestly, like sometimes it, sometimes people just get it. If they're the right type of person, they'll be like, they'll be like teaching me while I'm trying to teach a class. And sometimes it just goes, as you all know, I'm sure when you talk to WordPress to clients, it goes right over their heads, right? So uh, one of the biggest things that I've been trying to do over the years is just really listen to people and what they need and really figure out, okay, you know, sometimes I'm trying to teach them Gutenberg when they don't even know like what a domain name is. You know, so you really have to sit down and figure out, okay, whoever your audience is, whether it's maybe your church group or maybe it's your clients or maybe it's someone that maybe it's someone who's contacted you to, for, to hire you, you really need to kind of sit down and think about what's their needs, where are they at in the process and how can you help them at that particular point. And that's not so much just for teaching, that's for client servicing in general, but ultimately listen to your clients, they will tell you what they need. You got to research your target audience, obviously demographics, geographics, um, budgets, all that stuff is going to provide you insight into what, what they want to know. If they're small business entrepreneurs, they're probably really interested in like WooCommerce stuff. You know, if they're bloggers, they're going to know about, more about how to create slick content, that kind of stuff. So um, researching your audience, that really comes from doing, in my opinion, the best way to research is, is from doing this stuff, just going out there, offering something and getting feedback on that particular uh, educational or, or learning product. Um, Another great thing to think about is like, what do you do all the time that you don't want to have to explain every single time? Um, this is a great thing to like to teachify, right? Like if you have to te tell your clients every single time, this is a page, this is a post, this is a blog, this is that, this is how you log into your site. It's great to have like a little mini course, even if it's just for your new clients to be like, Hey, here's five videos that I've done for you. And you, that way you don't have to go each single time to teach them a live thing, like how to log into the WordPress site. Because as many of you know, and, and um, not, I love clients. Clients are great. I'm not trying to not clients at all. But as many of you know, you can teach them how to log in and about two days later, they'll forget how to log in. So it's good to have like a library of educational content for your business that you can use on demand when they uh, want to, um, when they need to know how to figure something out. You know, and obviously you can do uh, educational content just specifically on their site, or you could create sort of like white label or like, um, sort of generic WordPress content, because at the end of the day, the user experience for many admins is really similar. So uh, definitely think about what you do frequently and, and what have you mastered well that you could bring to the world. Uh, maybe it's not for a client, maybe it's you're gonna put post it on YouTube or post it on a public platform where you want people to take advantage of your skills. Think about what you have done really well or think of maybe, maybe you went in and you mastered BuddyPress, right? BuddyPress is your thing. So create a course on BuddyPress or create some videos on BuddyPress because that's what you do. Um, and that's a great way to build your visibility online and a great way to build your authority, a great way to generate more leads and more um, opportunity for your business. And definitely one thing that I've learned over the years, like you've got to keep it simple. As much as I want to get into the weeds of WordPress like and, and sort of showcase 
my skills and showcase like terminology that like we know like you know um block like we use these we use this wordpress jargon a lot you know like that we that we know and to us it's just it's just second nature because we've been doing this all for so long or or just because once you get into the know the language of the wordpress community it's what we say right but but at the end of the day especially when you're working with wordpress newbies you really got to keep it simple and i think really great training doesn't focus on the actual i you might skewer me if you're saying this great training doesn't really focus on the tactical implementation of things sometimes sometimes great training is really just about empowering people for them to understand they have to have a growth mindset and understand that they have to go learn how to do this stuff at their own level um because training doesn't stop in the classroom training has got to continue on when people go and do the, keep doing this stuff on their website and it's really more about really more about empowering them to take the time to go step by step and do this a few times so they get more comfortable with it. And once they get past that initial hump with WordPress, they'll be so enabled with WordPress that they, they'll feel more empowered to, to do more with their website. And finally, you gotta just fail sometimes. I've put out my, many videos, many courses, many uh, classes that I put out there and they just didn't work. Maybe it was me, maybe it was the audience, maybe it was a little bit of both, but at the end of the day, once I've failed i fail forward and just keep going with it and pivot until i find the thing that actually works that's my motto there's no such thing as a failure all failure equals success all right so how do you use this to grow your business um it's been actually pretty interesting i've definitely um have used teaching a lot to sort of grow my business over the years um my business today is mostly teaching in a lot of ways uh but all, ultimately you can definitely integrate training and in, right now you all could probably integrate training into your service offerings right it, once you have a client I know for me, one of the easiest things that I do in terms of prospecting or in terms of putting out a proposal is a proposal is going to have here are, here, this is what I'm going to do for you. Maybe it's eight hours of WordPress work or whatever. I'm going to build you a site and it's going to cost this much money. And then it's going to be an additional two to five hours to teach you how to use it. Right. And just as a line item in the proposal, sometimes they go for it. Sometimes they don't. But if it, at the end of the day, when you realize that people like, um, it, that's also a good way to kind of feel the client out too. If they're interested in the training, then that knows how much, how you're going to approach this client in the future, right? If they don't want the training, then you know that they're going to need more of a monthly ongoing retainer commitment. So therefore it's going to give you a little bit different pitch in terms of how you're going to propose future ongoing services for this client. So it's a good way to kind of feel the client out too. Um, again, we talked about tighter connections. The more you help them, the more they're able to do on their own. And that's actually better because then that frees you up to do, higher level things for them. You know, going in and optimizing content, I love doing it. I don't mind doing it for clients, but really what they can just go add their own posts and pages. I'm okay with that. You know, so I'd rather them do it. And I think they appreciate, some clients really appreciate that. And they, they feel like they're getting a better experience and therefore they're more willing to look at me for other services and offerings that I might be able to provide for them. Uh, definitely qualifying your students and students and clients too. I've had many students come to the class they have an idea for a product and they want to learn how to do it themselves. And let's just say it ends up being much easier for them just to hire me to do it. Hey, what, why not? You know, so definitely think of teaching as a lead generation opportunity as well. A lot of people come to the workshop. Um, we've actually gotten some good biz business out of it that I filtered to this group. <laughs> so over the years, so, you know, uh, basically they come to the class, they are like, Oh, I want to do this. And I'm like, you know, I could teach you how to do that, but it's really probably more efficient for you just to hire someone else or to do what you do best. You know, sometimes I have to remind them they do this and I do that, you know, so um, definitely a great way to qualify. Uh, I see a chat here. Yeah, absolutely. Lead gen, lead gen, lead gen. Definitely probably one of the most ex best things that you can do with it. If you don't make a ton of money with it, it, it may not be what you may, you might not be able to sell a course for $200, but you might be able to get a handful of clients that lead to, uh, lots of great income opportunities. Oop, I lost my, and obviously vice versa. Sometimes it's a great way for you to qualify your students and for your students to qualify you, right? Um, obviously when you know what they're doing, sometimes they come to a class and I realize what they're doing and I really don't want to help them. It's just not a good fit for me. I may not want to work with them, but at least I'm giving them a good value and sending them on their way. Sorry, sorry clients. But yeah, no, that's Sometimes it's not a good fit. If it's not something I'm passionate about or not something that I feel is a good fit for my business in terms of what I want to do with my life, I just have to say no or pass it on to someone else, you know? So it's a good way to go back and forth. All right, so building an initial training product and delivering it. Um, look, 
you got to, as we talked about, just to, I need to reiterate this again, you got to understand your students' needs. You know, it's really easy for us being sort of techies or, or want to be techies that like, we want to do this because we think this is the coolest thing out there and we want to share a particular audience or, or we want to share a particular feature or share a particular um, benefit. But at the end of the day, it's probably not, may not be what your students need. You have to consider yourself as usually, you're usually on the front end. Like you're kind of like in the water catching the wave. Your students might still be on the beach, you know, and they're not even in the water yet. So you got to get them from the beach into the water. You really have to kind of look back and figure out what do they need in order to get to where you're at. Um, a lot of times you have to show them their gap, like, you know, or what I call, you know, all biblical references aside, you know, but I like to say, what's the, what's their holy land? You know, if they're trying to make money online, okay, well, how are we going to show them how they can make money online with WordPress, right? That's going to, they're going to see, oh, wow, I can do this. If I learn how to do this, okay, then they put two and two together. Be like, okay, yes, I need to take Scott's course because Scott's going to show me how to do X, Y, and Z. And then you have to show them, okay, you know, this is, the gap is another really important one too. A lot of times people get excited and they hear a lot of uh, messaging from uh, competitors like Squarespace and Wix and how it's so easy to build a website that anyone can do it. But then when they sit down and actually start building a website, they realize that they actually are missing a lot of skills. And sometimes we have to explain to them that, yes, you can do it, but you're going to have a little bit of a gap and I'm going to help you get through that gap. So definitely things to consider, but most likely like copywriting or writing in general, you got to show them the Holy Land. You got to show them what they're going to get if they go ahead and enroll in this course. Um, and then obviously provide your best content you can. Uh, there's no like, you, once you have someone on the hook or once you have someone in, the, in your course, you just have to give them the, your absolute best content you have. Um, because at the end of the day, that's going to really drive home the most value for people. And if they have the most value, then they're going to come back and take another course or hire you or do something else. Uh, no, no skimping on your content. That's just all I'm trying to say. And no, hux, no hustling. Like, don't like be like, yeah, I'm going to give you, this happens a lot. Like, oh yeah, I'm going to sell you a $200 course. And then you take it. It's like five videos and they completely suck. You know, don't do that. Just don't do that. That's not a great way. It's not good reputation for you. Um, there is this concept of minimum viable minimum viable product or minimum viable course. Like what's the minimum viable course you can do to get students in. And I don't disagree with that concept. Like sometimes you have to build the most minimum viable course you can viable course you can to just get something going, but don't charge $200 for something that's not really fully built out. You know, be realistic with people be like, Hey, I built a minimum minimum viable course. It's maybe only five videos. I need your feedback, but I'm going to give you a huge first user discount to do that. You know, this is definitely a great way to do that. And then once you're in, obviously create an experience for them and remember to use small bite-sized chunks with content. Um, if it's, especially relate your sort of marketing messaging to your actual course content. So if you're offering a full WordPress jumpstart, like I'm gonna take you from zero to hero, then you have to offer zero to hero in this course. Don't go in there and be like, okay, well, yeah, I actually I'm just gonna give you a little bit and then I can't do the rest, it's too hard. You gotta make sure that whatever you're selling you're being realistic with how you're selling it and offering it in little chunks that people can actually absorb and do a little bit at a time. All right. So this is, I think, important for a lot of people who are just getting into the training game or you want to train, you know, sort of productize your business. For me, the easiest sort of way to get the way that I started doing a lot more training was I offered one on one sessions, you know, like just getting it's basically freelancing, except instead of me just doing and building the site for them. We're, we're coming together, we meet and we build the site together, right? I'm just teaching them what I know. I call them ask me anything sessions. I still do them today. But at the end of the day, it, this is really easy, but this is still very much like, there's no, there's no curriculum. There's, it's like, okay, bring your questions. I answer them for you. Super easy. Um, and maybe I even charge a little bit higher hourly rate for it because I'm not just doing, I'm teaching at the same time. But the same way, it, like that's super easy for me to do, but it doesn't scale very well. If, once you start to go up the chain, it gets harder, like small group training. Like if you're going to do corporate training or let's say a company hires you and they have five people that they want to, they want you to teach their marketing department, how to use WordPress. That's great. Cause you're going to get five people at once. It's maybe a nice little gig, right? But it's harder because people are on different levels. Like maybe some people are super, they're already like, they could teach you how to use WordPress, right? And then some of them are like, they don't even know like how to use a browser or turn the computer on, which that's happens. Everyone's at different levels. But it gets a little harder, obviously classrooms, like a, a classroom setting where you have, uh, maybe you charge, like this is like where you charge a, a, a fee to come to your class. 
and you have 50 students in your class and they all have various levels and they all have their own projects they're working on like and they're all using different themes like this is a challenge like a lot like this is actually why I don't do a lot of this type of teaching as much as I used to is like I will do a class of five or ten students per se but they one will have the Divi theme one will have the Genesis theme one will have the um you know Coca Mungo theme and it's just ex extremely difficult to try to get everyone on the same page it's almost impossible that's why I don't really recommend that type of training unless you really are uh, crazy like I was and still am it sometimes so think about that classroom training it's harder online training in my opinion is even harder because you don't get the immediate feedback from students who come to your class when you have it when you do an in-person class you get people looking at you you get feedback you kind of can feel the room a little bit now even like even right now there's 26 people on this webinar or 25 if I don't include myself I really can't see you I can see some of you at a time but I really can't get a feedback if you're liking this content or not right so that makes it harder when you're teaching online also you can invest a lot of money into building a static course or building a course that has you know pre-recorded video content and you're gonna have to invest either your time and or money to get that done right and you could build this entire course and nobody even no one likes it like it sucks you know it happens believe me i've been there you know so you have online training is good if you can do it if you can do it but it's harder to it's harder in a lot of ways too and i think that what i recommend is still starting with smaller groups or one-on-one -on -one training because that will give you a lot of great feedback in terms of how you present yourself and how you do a lot of this training it will get the right type of mindset for who your typical student is um, they're going to ask the same questions over and over again, and you're going to understand, okay, these are the questions that most students have. Then when you're able to sort of hone that in, then you can move yourself towards online training, in my opinion. Or some people just jump right into online training. That's great. Go for it. I'll support you 110%. But just remember, uh, it doesn't hurt to practice, practice, practice. All right. We got a question here. Thank you. Thank you. That's a, just some good feedback. So, um, all right, so, and as I mentioned, scaling your offering, the bad thing about one-on-one -on -one training is it's just like freelancing. You're not really scaling your offering. Whereas with online training, you could, you could put a course out there, let's just say a $50 online course, and you sell 40 tickets in a day. Hey, that's not a bad day's work, you know? So it's much easier to scale online training, but I think it's harder to get into. But then again, that's what, what Seth Godin calls the dip, right? It's the hard part. If you can get through the hard part, you've got everything. All right, so I want to give you some lesson planning, right? This is an ex I, I didn't make this up myself. This is something that I borrowed, and I'll show you where I got the source from before. But at the end of the day, training is not just like blurting everything out, right? I've learned this. Um, fortunately, my wife has got a master's degree in, in teaching, so I kind of was picking her brain a lot. I've learned a lot of this from my own mistakes and trying to teach over the years. But basically, each lesson should have some type of flow right as best as you can you know um starting with the overview what are you going to teach this is actually good for presentations too although i don't always follow my own format so do as i say don't do as i do on this one right that's kind of a joke but what are you what are you going to teach right what what are the concepts you're going to teach what's the initial explanation of the core concept you're teaching right what are the relatable examples like real world examples that you can provide What's the detailed explanation? Like this is the nuts and bolts actually going through the explanation. Um, and then finally, like the activity, like, okay, well, here, how can you do this? Like you try it type of thing. And that's, that's, this can be hard when you're doing tech or WordPress because not every, not all of these like fit nicely. But if you can try to break it up, maybe sit down before you actually create course content and come up with some of these things and just try to figure out, okay, can I create some real world, real world examples? And can I create some type of activity or homework that they go and they try it, right? And then of course, depending on your objective for your entire lesson, is this, if this is a marketing piece, what's your call to action? Okay, look, this is a great thing to do, but maybe you need me to do it for you. <laughs> or maybe you need to hire me for private coaching, right? Or maybe you need to take, make, take my next course my more expensive course, right? This is what they call that tripwire course, right? You take a free course or a cheap course and then you get them to buy a more expensive course because you've built that authority and you've built that relationship with your um, users, right? Uh, I'm gonna give you guys a copy of this presentation so you can, or you can take a screenshot of this, but this is something I really kind of want you to take away. If you're gonna do teaching, this is try to make sure you have some type of lesson plan that you work off of and use that over and over again. 
because this is this is really what people need. It feels repetitive, like when you say this is what we're going to learn, this is how we're going to learn it, this is you know relatable concepts. It feels kind of weird. It's not very conversational, but students will appreciate when you do stuff like this because this is actually how they learned. They grew up probably learning it this way. Um, if it was, um, this is kind of like going off of the how we learned in grammar school, right? All right, so uh, this is actually, I took, I stole that lesson plan concept from Spark Video, which is an app by Adobe. And actually Adobe has, uh, this is a great way to create sort of like uh, lesson videos, if you will. If you wanna create lessons, this is a, I, I don't know if it's completely free, they have a free version, but you can download this on your iPhone or they have a web-based version, but it's called Spark Video. It's not open source, sorry, I know this is a WordPress meetup. But at the end of the day, they have a really cool template for creating video content. And they, they say overview, concept, example, explanation, you try it, summary, right? This is a great lesson template. And you can do the, use this in Spark Video to create some lesson concepts for your either in-person or, or online courses. So refining, refine, refine, refine. It's taken me a long time to get to some of these courses, even to the point where I think people are actually really getting value out of them. And that's just something it, it takes time. Um, so some tips for refining, you got to test your materials out. Uh, for the last like 10 years, I've been teaching classes at Nextdoor, which is a little free collaborative workspace coffee shop that's down in Lakeview East. It's owned by State Farm. And they've been letting me teach a WordPress sort of intro to WordPress class there for many years. And honestly, I sort of feel like a comedian. I've, I'm always testing my material out, you know, and you've got to just keep testing new material, testing it on people who are willing to listen. Because when you get that feedback in person, you can take that material and then use it to refine your products, your courses, and your content online or, or future uh, online courses. Whenever I get a chance to speak to, to the WordPress meetups, like this meetup right here, I take it because you never know. This is a great way to get some feedback and refine content, right? So I appreciate you all for being my test dummies. Thank you. No, I'm kidding. So, um, uh, you know, you got to find demand for your product too. Obviously, if you're going to build a course about you know, the people building like the Gutenberg courses or the JavaScript courses for WordPress, they were killing it because there was a demand for that stuff. You know, people were looking to know, but obviously to build a course for how to use BuddyPress, mm, might not be a, a lot of demand for that right now. I love BuddyPress. I've really been trying to use it for many ways over the years, but I don't, not a lot of people are using it right now. So I don't think so. So um, there's not a lot of demand for it. So um, you have to really kind of find a demand for your product or you have to make that demand and that demand can be, it's difficult. You can make demand, but that, that can be somewhat difficult. Um, and, and if anything, if you want to get into the game, just build a landing page, you know, put something out there be like, Hey, I want to teach you how to, let's just say you want to teach buddy press. I'm going to teach you buddy press from A to Z, right? How to build a community based website with WordPress, build a landing page with WordPress. Say, this is what you're going to teach. If you're interested, sign up right now and put your name and email and I will let you know when the course is available, right? And that's a great way to say, hey, you know, there's a little demand for this. People want it. I got 50 people who are willing to pay me to do this. So that's a great way to test it without having to invest, excuse me, without having to invest a ton of time in building out a full course. Uh, and then obviously offer an experience if you are doing in-person events, kind of hard to do that right now, but if you're doing in-person events or even online events, like how can you create an experience that's not just you teaching? How can you connect other people? How can you, can, can you, ugh, how can you make better connections among the students? How can you create um, a really great experience because they had really great Wi-Fi or they had really great food or they had a really, we, and maybe you ended it with a concert or something, you know, com the convention business is changing. Obviously it's really changed right now, but it's been changing over the years from being just teaching, like just teaching C or, you know, CE or continuing education to creating universal experiences where people come, they maybe go to a concert, they have a really great time. So you have to create as best you can an experience for your attendees. It's gonna take time to figure out what that is, but just figure out, just remember that like you have to just always be trying to build a great experience for you and for your attendees as a teacher. All right, so continue to grow opportunity with training, how to make some more money with this, right? This is a, uh, something that I'm pulling from Seth Godin, who's someone who I really admire and read, read every one of his books when I, when I absolutely can. But I just want you to kind of think about this. You know, being a freelancer is you often you're trading your time for money. And I mentioned this, you know, mostly when you're offering like WordPress services or WordPress consulting, you're willing to say, hey, I'm going to give you eight hours of my time to build you something and it's going to cost this much money per hour, right? And basically people are hiring you on a per hour basis. 
Now, as an entrepreneur, it's different. You're making products that they can use to, that you can sell anytime. Like you can make money in your sleep, right? If you have a course and you sell a hundred dollar course while you're sleeping, hey, that's a pretty good night's sleep, you know. So um, being an entrepreneur is a little different. Being an entrepreneur takes a little bit more risk, right? Being an entrepreneur takes a little more finesse. So I want you to consider that building courses can be is more like being an entrepreneur but also it's helping you create multiple sources of income, right? Obviously your course can be, you can be selling your course when you're not working so hard, right? And it could be a great way to sort of diversify your offering. If you just do WordPress consulting, you never know, you might need to do other, other income sources. So definitely keep this in mind for how you position your business and why training could be a good thing for you. Um, obviously once you have a community around your training too, let's say you have, 200 students, that's a whole new revenue opportunity that you could use to sell affiliate products that you could use to sell other products and services. Maybe you build a WordPress plugin. Well, there you go. You got a WordPress, you have an audience to buy your WordPress plugin plugin before you even build it. Right. It just creates a whole having community is having everything these days. In my opinion, once you have an audience beyond just, you know, a handful of clients, then you have a lot more opportunity to make money online. Um, you know, you can, you can keep, as I mentioned, you can keep refining it and sell it as instru instructional products, right? Uh, and then you can incorporate content marketing, right? Once you have a course, then you can, once you have an online course, marketing your business online through content, like writing blog posts and doing social media content changes because now you're trying to funnel people into your course, right? You want them to buy your course, especially if you're using your course as lead generation for you as a freelancer, right? So let's say, your course is how to build a website with WordPress and you're using that to get some WordPress clients. Now your content marketing, your blogging and stuff like that makes more sense because all of that content is going to be focused on getting people into your course, which is now your funnel into your lead generation opportunity. And another way, it's just a great way to collaborate with others too, right? So if you have a course, if you've got a list and I've got a list, we could collaborate. We could, we could swap lists, right? If, if, I'm looking at Steve Stern's photo, right? So Steve, you got a course and I got a course and Steve's got a different audience, but we have overlap. We could collaborate and we could share each other's audiences, right? So that could be a great opportunity. Uh, thank you, Steve, for uh, letting me borrow you. But basically that is um, just, just a way, another way to make money is helping other people by helping other people by collaborating. All right, thanks. Yeah, and so talking about funnels, I just want to mention those of you who know me, I have the I, you're going to hear my crazy here for a second, but this is the digital acquisition cycle. How many of you are familiar with the funnel concept, right? Funnel sales marketing, right? There's obviously people come to your website and I don't know if you can see my webcam, but I'm, I'm actually holding up a orange funnel right now. And, and the funnel starts with awareness. And then obviously at the bottom of the funnel, your lead, this is where they make some type of conversion or some type of purchase for you. Right? So this is traditionally, we call this funnel marketing. And I, 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 I believe in the funnel, but I think the funnel is not quite everything your business needs. I believe it's more of an infinite loop like I have on the screen. Okay, this is what I call the digital acquisition cycle, and it's the topic of my book. Basically, there's four major or five major quadrants to your, your online strategy or digital strategy, right? Awareness, consideration, conversion or purchase, retention, and advocacy. And at the end of the day, I'm not going to get to, into this too deep because this is a whole nother conversation, but at the end of the day, you have to do a bunch of stuff to build awareness for you and your product, right? These are all the things you can do to build awareness for your business from publicity, traditional publicity, traditional radio ads to word of mouth, affiliate marketing, sponsorship, content marketing, direct mail, but putting a billboard on the expressway, that's going to build awareness for your business, right? It might not be the ideal client, but it's going to build awareness for your business. You got to do stuff to get people who don't know who that you, you have to do stuff to get people to find you when they don't know you exist. Right? So this could be most likely this could be like Facebook ads, or this could be Google ads, right? This is stuff that's going to grab people when they're looking for your products and services. Then once you have them on your website, right? The goal is to funnel them to your website. This is really where, in my opinion, the funnel is right. So the funnel is awareness. And then the funnel, the tip of the funnel is getting them on your website. And then once they, once you have them on the website, then you have to build that consideration. You have to build that, that relationship with them. That's where your website user experience, your, your copy, your content, your testimonials, your media, your videos, that's going to lead them to the purchase or the conversion. 
hopefully they purchase your course, right? So once they purchase your course, whether it's a dollar or $2,000, you're going to have to do some stuff to keep them engaged, right? To keep them going. So this is where you're going to have to do some, use some marketing tactics like buyer reinforcement and transactional emails or email marketing to keep them retained, to keep them interested, right? To re keep that retention of the, of the client. And then this is where a lot of us fail and myself included sometimes you have to keep them going. You have to keep them engaged. This is the remarketing side of the digital acquisition cycle, right? This is where really your blog, your social media, your newsletter, that kind of stuff really fit into your marketing strategy, your digital marketing strategy. Because once you have people in your database, let's say you have 200 students, this is why you need to send a weekly newsletter or a monthly newsletter to keep them engaged, right? Because once we keep them engaged and keep sending them more value, we send them a ton of value, then what's going to happen? They're going to become advocates for your business. And then when they become advocates for your business and they start to refer people to you, that's the last part of the, they will send more people back into your funnel, right? They'll send more people to your website. And that's where the free marketing comes in, right? That's where that word of mouth, Highly, highly valuable free referral marketing comes in is when you create brand advocates for your business. You might have to grease the wheels a little bit, right? On the blue side, you might have to grease the wheels with doing some advertising, right? But once you get some people in, hopefully they'll convert into referring their friends and their family, right? And those people will come, then that reduces your overall cost per acquisition that brings more people into your uh, funnel. All right. So if you want to dive into this more, a uh, little, yeah. So obviously, the advocacy stuff is refer a friend support. That could be a page in your website that offers affiliate marketing or refer a friend, influencer support. Obviously, if they have their own followings, if they can support you and you'll support them, then that could work out too, right? But, but that's the advocacy, advocacy channels. Uh, finally, if you want to dive into this more, uh, quick blatant self-promotion. I have a book out on Amazon, The Digital Acquisition Cycle for Content Creators. Please check it out. Um, it's like, for, if you have Kindle Unlimited, it's free. So, uh, but it's a great read if you're stuck at home and have nothing to do, which is none of us. All right. So I want to talk about WordPress for a second, right? So why use WordPress when there's platforms like Udemy, Coursera, and Teachable? These are like hosted platforms. These are like the WordPress.coms of the course world. You know, again, just like WordPress.com versus WordPress.org, these platforms are for profit and not open source, right? So they are going to charge you a monthly fee or they're going to charge you some type of fee that you may not even realize you have to pay for to host your course, right? Udemy is great because they have a community of people who are interested in courses, but the average amount of money you make per course is like a couple bucks per student because they take their fees. They take their lot. Of, you know, it's right now it's a, there's a lot of spotlights on like platforms like Grubhub because Grubhub is taking a lot of money from small businesses to use their app, their app or the platform. And of course, it depends. I still use Grubhub because it's a great way to order food, but I do realize that the small businesses get squeezed because Grubhub is taking a big cut of that particular percentage, right? So you can use these platforms like Udemy, Coursera, or Teachable to build a course, but you can also use your self-hosted WordPress site. And just like I would recommend for any, any you know, WordPress versus anything in the world, when you build with WordPress, you're building your own powerful growth platform. And when you own basically 100% of it, and no matter what, you can build a scalable community with WordPress on your own .com domain name. You use these other platforms, you're stuck to their terms and restrictions. With Udemy, you can't email your students at, you can't email your students to promote your next thing, right? So that's a waste of time in my opinion. With WordPress, you own everything, you own the newsletter, you can email them as much as you want. The bad news is WordPress.org isn't going to give you any type of marketing juice. You're going to have to do all that marketing yourself. And that's where the digital acquisition cycle comes in. You need to have a sustainable marketing system to get students and clients to your website, right? So I just want you to remember that you might have to make some type of initial investment to get people to your website. But then once they start buying your course, you can then take your profits to reinvest in your advertising, right? And once you do that, you're building a sustainable ecosystem for creating content. And that's what I want you all to think about, why this is a good investment for you. All right, so some, some course plugins for WordPress. Um, some of you may be familiar with these, but there's like LearnDash, there's Sensei. It used to be a WooCommerce product. I think it's maybe branched off into its own thing now. Uh, but Sensei, 
WP Complete is a nice little plugin too if you want to make a, just like a little simple kind of course. These are all great learning management systems. LMS stands for learning management system. These are all great plugins you can use. Learn Dash is quite expensive. It's a premium plugin. Sensei is you know, a couple hundred bucks probably. WP Complete is just a plugin that sort of like tracks, you, tracks students along a couple pages. It's a short code that you can put on the bottom of pages. So you can watch, you can get them, once they complete the page, they can hit complete, it'll take them to the next page. It's not, it's a nice little plugin. Personally, I've done this the wrong way. I've gone in and I've purchased all of these plugins and I have not used them. They all suck in the wrong way. <laughs> no, they're great plugins, but don't invest a ton of money in these. In my opinion, build a simple course first. And I have a method for doing that. Build a simple course first, put six or seven videos together, put it on a WordPress page and call it a day and just see how it goes because you'll get tied up trying to use these bigger plugins. And like, this is a whole nother language with learn dash. It's like a whole nother thing you got to learn. And it's just really complicated. In my opinion, you're better off just starting off simple. Uh, that's actually why I'm looking, I'm interested in collaborating with people who are looking to build online courses. If you are thinking about building an online course, WordPress or marketing or anything like that, let me know. I'd love to sort of collaborate and see if we can't build courses together through my uh, company called Content Academy. All right, so I'm wrapping things up here. Book recommendations. If you wanna to go to my site, uh, I have a link, I'll put it in the chat. But if you wanna to go to my site, I have some book recommendations for getting into training. These are ones that I've read and recommend highly. This first book right here, What Great Trainers Do by Bolton and Bolton is definitely a high quality read. Uh, Growth Mindset by Carol Dweck is a classic. Uh, how to live with you know to your full potential with your mind start with why great experience great book as well um, book yourself solid by Michael Port this is actually available through the Chicago Public Library if you're in the city and you have um, if you're in the city and you have access to the public libraries like Kindle app or whatever you can get this for free 8020 sales marketing by Perry Marshall is another really high quality marketing book I recommend and then finally illuminate uh, the whole the Holy Land thing where I said you got to show them the Holy Land that comes that comes from this book. It's called Illuminate. It's by a woman named Nancy Duarte. She is a expert at doing presentations. She's like the the person to hire when you want to do a presentation in Silicon Valley. So definitely check that out. And I know I've been talking for a long time. I want to I want to make sure I get to some of these questions. But basically, thank you. If you guys have questions or want to reach out or collaborate with me, feel free to contact me. There's my email, my phone number call or text me and uh, check out my sites, okay? Cool, questions. Sure, sure, sure. Mostly feedback. Yes, own your content. Thank you, thank you. I had a question for you, Scott. Yes, thank you. Um, so do you find though that when you kind of invest your time and you do a video training, Mm -hmm. that in six months it might be you have to do it over again because the dashboard has changed or there's a new consideration or I, i'm what, what are your thoughts about that that's actually something i cha I, I challenge myself i i think it's challenging because like i know i've started to build courses and by the time i'm done with the course it's already out of date you know so um that's not, that's kind of something we have to live with just based on the, the fast-pacedness of the world we live in with this stuff that's why it's good to kind of focus on the basics that don't change so quickly sometimes. Um, and then of course, the good news is that you can do like live trainings pretty frequently. Like the cool thing with like Zoom is like you could do a course and then you could hop on Zoom, do a live training and then just say, then have that as like a supplemental appendix. You know, it's not a great experience, but it's better than nothing. You know, where you can say, hey, here's a WordPress updated to 4.2.9 or whatever. And here's a, Here's a, a little cat, a little thing you should know uh, for that, right? So it's it's kind of like always being on top of it. I hate using the term passive income or passive courses because there's no such thing in this space. The courses are going to um, change all the time. I have a question. Mm -hmm. Yes. Hi. Um, if I was to offer a free course, can I monetize that with advertising or? But most people kind of like look at that and go, no, thanks. Well, it depends what you mean by advertising. If it's like uh, lead generation, yes. If it's like affiliate marketing, sure. Um, if it's a kind of like soft sell stuff, yeah. 
Uh, it depends what type of value you're giving too. If it's really high valuable stuff, then people might be okay with the ads. But if it's just a little simple put together course because you're trying to hustle ads, then people aren't going to like it. You know, so okay. it's all all how much you invest in it. All right. Thanks. Sure. I want to chip in here. Uh, do you charge extra for maybe recording and editing a Zoom class? Do I charge extra for recording and editing a Zoom class? Is that your question? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, I don't actually, normally when I do a training, I'll do, I'll just record it and then send them in the file when I'm done. I don't do a lot. Okay. I mean, yeah, if I had to do editing to it, I would charge them extra for that. It's a good, it's a good way to think about it. Yeah, for sure. I hope that answered your question. Thank you. No, that's perfect. Uh, I was just curious of, you know, what the space typically does. Maybe that's a better, you know, you know, what's expected. Uh, I guess maybe this will be a perfect follow-up. What's expected uh, when you do a Zoom training? Uh, what, what is the client expecting to get besides the actual half hour, one hour, or half day, full day? Mm -hmm. For me, usually when they, they, we do a Zoom training, they, they don't even like, a lot of times it's the first time they're using Zoom. <laughs> so maybe that won't be the case anymore because people, more and more people are using it. So it's, I usually just kind of add the video on as an added value. Um, but, but yeah, that's definitely a, also I'm trying to get into maybe some of you got my email because I sent the email out. Like I'm trying to actually use some zoom trainings for my own content marketing purposes, or maybe they have a WordPress issue and, and I can, they're willing to let me record the, the training session so I could post it on my YouTube channel. Right. So that is some people are interested, but then when I actually tell them what's happening, they're, they're not so interested. So we'll see. But, um, <laughs> but basically that, it's good content for me. And at the end of the day, I'm helping them. So I think it's a good exchange, you know? So um, that's another way you could use also from zoom. You can go live to your Facebook page. So you could do a live training that you maybe have a one-on-one -on -one and then you go live. If the client's okay with that, obviously you got to get the client approved. And also I would make sure you have some type of release form for that as well, because you're showing them the back end of their website and they may not realize what they're, you know, you just want to make sure that they understand what you're doing with this live video kind of thing. So yeah, no, that's a really if, good point. Yeah, especially if they have like, you know, sta like we're, if they have like jetpack stacks on or like e-commerce and they've got their WooCommerce sales, you know, and you could be flashing that to the public. So you have to just make sure that they understand what you could be doing, especially for live video. You know, you can't edit that out per se. So, so yeah. Thanks so much. Thanks sure. so much, Scott. That was great. Absolutely cool. Thank great. you. Thank you. All right. Well, there's a question in the mm -hmm. chat. Um, do you see that? Should a freelancer or web developer entrepreneur oh. do only WordPress websites or should they also engage in coding websites from scratch? Uh, I think you should do what is best for you. You know, if you want to, I, I think that, I think the question is like, should you offer only WordPress websites or should you still code from scratch? I think you should just, I think you should do what the client wants. It, it's hard to not offer a WordPress website today. Most clients want some type of content management system. But, you know, it's completely up to you. So, hey, Rich, Becky, China, I'm cool with like just opening up the chat too and doing, everyone can just turn the mics on. I'm, I don't know if you guys want to do that or not, but uh, we don't have to just be me, you know, so, so yeah. Sounds, sounds good. Yeah, let me. Becky's left the building. <laughs> oh. Do you mean turn off every, or turn on every, I think everybody has been unmuted. Yeah, I, I'm trying to turn off my screen sharing here, and I've somehow I've moved the Zoom thing around. There, you go. Know, or there we go. Okay. Hey. Yeah, so like I don't know if you guys want to just go for free for all, or whatever. It's been a while since we've seen each other, but but yeah, that's yeah. uh, but uh. Well, I just wanted to say I'd like to uh, say that we do have um, something scheduled for next month. Yay! Um, we're going to uh, bring in the, um, one of the gals from Termageddon to talk about privacy matters and with all the laws in California going crazy and, and Europe going nuts, this is something everyone really should pay at least a modicum of attention to, small site or not. Um, you should have an understanding of what privacy policies are and, and, and how they protect you. Uh, so that's what's going to be coming next month. And then I would love to hear from anybody who wants to email me about 
if something something they would like to present, I'm always open for new suggestions. So um, we'll take it from there, but we'll stick to the Wednesday nights. And then the other question is, where do you like to host your courses, course videos, YouTube, Vimeo, or self-host? I mean, if it's public content and I'm looking to use it for marketing, I mean, YouTube for sure, because YouTube is its own search engine kind of thing. But most of my courses, if they're private courses where people have to go through some type of paywall or some type of thing, then uh, I try to upload the videos like to a CDN, like maybe Rackspace Cloud or Amazon AWS and host the videos from a CDN. So that way it's not like, because Vimeo Pro is like $100 a month or something like that. I don't want to do that's, that. You that's know? what my client uses, yeah. Yeah, so Rackspace is like, it looks expensive, but if you look at it, it's like 0. 0.0001 penny per gigabyte. So it's actually super cheap. Um, I actually host all my podcasts all my videos on like a CDN, Amazon, AWS, like the Elastic Cloud is the same thing. Um, and it looks like, it looks challenging. It is a little challenging to learn it the first time, but actually the pricing is super, super cheap because there's no middleman. You're not paying that middleman. You're going right to the host, you know? And, and at the end of the day, those, these hosting services, like for podcasting, like Podbean and Lisbon, Lisbon and Blue, Blueberry, they all, they're all doing the same thing. They're just charging you because they're a middleman for this uh, service.